pretty amazing job offer in hand. I was going to be working as an analyst in an electrical engineering company. Now, for someone who was an electrical engineer, this was quite thrilling, you know, being able to work in your own core field. But I wanted more. I wanted to be an innovator. And this is why I came back to India and I started working in sheet metal manufacturing as a product developer. It was amazing. I learned how to cut metal. I learned how to bend it. I learned how to stitch it together. I knew how versatile it was and the kind of fabulous things you could make with that. Anybody here on the F1 team knows what I'm talking about. And, and I really enjoyed myself, but I really wanted more as well. I know I was building products for the automotive sector, but I was wondering where I was building value out of these. I wanted to build products that had value to the customers that I was delivering it to. I wanted scale. I wanted to reach across all parts of India. And that's why I started Kamal Kesan. So uh, just to get a show and um, to make you realize the importance of what it is that we're trying to do. How many of you have your three square meals a day here? It's hostel food, I know, but come on. I'm sure you guys will eat. You need to eat, right? Now imagine if I told you that by 2020, this couldn't be a guarantee anymore. And the reason why this happens is because of two reasons. One, land in India, when it's passed down from generation to generation, is divided and divided further. Which means today, more than 83% of our farmers own less than five acre sizes of land. That, that's not so much of a problem in itself. But you know, when you add to the fact that India is primarily still a labor driven market. We do all of our operations manually. So this is fairly similar to most other developing countries as well. But the problem arises when this labor starts migrating. We're migrating at a rate of 21% yearly. And that's challenging for the farmer because what happens is there's a huge supply and demand gap, which means that the farmer is competing with the Tatas and Birlas to actually find his lab manual labor. This is pushing up costs for him. He spends more than 40% of his entire cultivation cost on just labor alone. Now he wants to have mechanization accessible to him, but relevance of these technologies is not available yet. Now this isn't so much of a problem for a country that is the third largest global manufacturer of tractors. And this is where we engineers come into the picture. So I started, uh, you know, I lived and grew up in an urban setting all my life. I didn't know anything about rural India. So I considered this as an opportunity. I traveled across the country. I met with people of all kinds of stakeholders in this ecosystem. But my most important learnings came from the farmers themselves. I learned that they were aspirational in their needs for machinery. They wanted equipments that were power driven. They wanted equipments that, you know, gave them reliability and quality. And I also realized that, you know, there are two paths that I could potentially be taking out here. I could be building high tech precision equipment that would make it a little bit more higher on the cost. Or I could be building the low tech solutions that make it accessible to a larger number of population. So with the intention that I wanted to build scale, I went with the lower, lower tech solutions. Now, which means that I was laying a bunch of design constraints on myself. I had to build equipments that were one, cost effective, because it was being targeted for small mar marginal farmers. But cost effective doesn't mean cheap. They already had access to cheap implements. They already had those imports that would break down during the times that they really wanted to use them on their fields. So that's not what I mean by cost effective. I mean products that are having good quality and that are reliable. The second thing that I wanted to, that I had to lay down as a constraint on myself was integration. They had a lot of equipments that did wonderful things as, you know, a, a solution, but they weren't relevant to the kind of practices that our farmers were doing. These are practices that our farmers have learned from generations of knowledge being passed down. They were sound practices and they needed equipments that meshed with these practices. We also needed equipments that were easy to maintain. Like I said, cheap machines broke down when they needed them, which means that we had to empower the farmer with our machines, which means that they were, they had to work with these machines, use them, easily uh, um, uh, deploy them, but at the same time also be able to maintain them. So these are the design constraints that we were laid with. Now having collected all of these uh, knowledge, we went out and tried to build an equipment. We tried to make a sugarcane planter. But before I tell you about sugarcane planter, I should tell you about the process of sugarcane planting itself. Now, like I said, someone from the urban uh, background, for me, 
finding out that sugarcane was actually planted horizontally and not vertically was impressive. That was such uh, 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 insightful knowledge. I usually thought that, you know, you dig a hole, you put a seed in, you cover it, and if you remember to water it, it will grow. But that's not the case here. So they started digging these things called as ridges, which are just trenches in the soil. They played the sugar, uh, placed the sugarcane material horizontally, and they covered it up. Seems simple. So the two parameters that we were trying to work with, one, orientation, two, frequency. How often does the sugarcane fall? Now, when this process is done manually, a farmer requires about 10 laborers working on a period of at least six days. Now, the cost to the farmer of this particular process is 12,000 rupees, and that's a per acre costing. Now, the kind of solution that we thought we'd come up with was we said, let's go with the simplest idea possible. Let's look at gravity as a principle. You know, if gravity makes an apple fall, sugar cane will fall. And so we came up with an implement that said, let's build a bin and make the sugar cane material inside, uh, place the sugar cane material inside the bin, attach to a tractor and run it. Such a failure. But that's okay. We knew we were going in with a very crude model, and the learning was more important. And that day I had two very important learnings. Because these tests were done in the presence of the farmers themselves, we learned that farmers are incredible supporters, incredible collaborators. They came out in hordes, they worked with us in the sun, they showed us, you know, this isn't the right kind of planting we want, this isn't the angle we want, this isn't the frequency we want. So they started setting our benchmarks on what was the ideal outcome we wanted. And that was phenomenal to have. The second thing uh, that we learned was it wasn't a simple problem that we were dealing with. This was a problem that had a lot of facets. The one thing was the engineering aspect of the problem, which was how do you work with sugar canes, which come in a tremendous amount of varieties. They have different diameters, different weights, different densities, and so you have to make these different products work with the same mechanism to drop it uniformly. And that's a very interesting challenge. We came up with a lot of solutions. We thought of vibrating trays, we thought of cam actuated mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera. So finally we ended up at a conveyor system. The second thing of that, uh, the second aspect of the problem was the socio-economic element of it. We had to be competing with that 12,000 rupee cost. We had to be sure that we were delivering a product that gave the farmer a benefit of that 12,000 rupees, which means that we had to give him a minimum of 50% in savings for him to consider it a viable solution to work with. And that was another aspect that we had to come up with. And the last part uh, was the business case. Now we had to build a product that was a tractor attachment. It was going to be driven by a PTO, which means there was a gearbox, which means the costs went up. So how does a regular two acre or a three acre farmer access this kind of a large capital cost? We went back to the village. We worked with the guys who already own tractors. And we said, listen, this is an amazing product. You can deliver a minimum of 50% savings to your community. Why don't you take this and rent it out? And we ran that as a pilot. We had a bunch of farmers working with us. We rented it with various uh, uh, pilot testing units and the phenomenal results that came out of it. So we had an average increase in 98% efficiency and we had a drop of 67%. We were able to plant one acre of sugarcane with just four hours. That was the kind of output we were able to deliver. This is just a acre. This is just one acre. Each of these one acre efficiency improvements results in a 12% increase for a farmer. Now this is one farmer. UP alone has 35 lakh farmers who's growing sugarcane. Now this number is 55 lakhs across the country. And this is one product and one process. That's all that I'm talking to you about. Imagine as you and I as engineers, the kind of solutions we can bring to this community. The, comp the, the kind of areas where there is a lot of possibilities that we can look at. Robotics is something that we can talk about. I have a friend who's working on cotton picking using robotics. Uh, better drip irrigation systems we can talk about. I know of an electronics engineer who's working on microcontrol systems for managing water, especially in a country where we have been having drought-like situations in the past two years. This becomes an invaluable proposition. We waste more than 60% of our produce on just supply chain issues alone. That means the food that we are eating is only 40% of what our farmer grows. 
Now this is another problem of why engineers need to be involved. So that's what I'm here to tell you about. This is why agriculture is an engineering problem. 